In this video, we're going to continue with our exploration of the different paint modes you can choose from whenever you're ready to merge your model from the retopple room in 3D Coat to the paint room. We've already gone over the per pixel painting options, so now we're ready to move on to micro vertex. And at this stage, we're going to pick up the pace. Instead of trying to be overly thorough in our explanations, we'll just try and be uh, more concise. Okay, so let's go to the retopple menu, and we'll now proceed to the micro vertex section. As we mentioned in the previous videos where we talked about using the patch option, this is only going to merge the geometry uh, and that's it. It's not going to bake any color textures, displacement, normal maps, things like that. It's not going to bake any of those. It's just going to send the geometry along with some blank layers that correspond to the uh, UVs that you may have as well as voxel objects. So um, let's go with this first option here and 3D coat memorizes the last settings you uh, worked on so we'll just hit OK and you have a rather lengthy explanation of what micro vertex is and does but the gist of it is that we need a one-to-one -one correspondence between the vertices on a model and the pixels on your UV map so if you have a 2k map 3d coat recommends that you essentially multiply uh, the size of your map, uh, basically 2K by 2K, and you would come up with uh, 4 million polygons. In this case, I split my model up, or at least the uh, body part here, I split it up into three different maps. So basically I have a 6K map here. So I would multiply 6K by 6K, and that would leave me with 36 uh, million polygons. But for this demonstration, that's probably a bit much. Um, it might affect performance a bit working on something that dense so I'll just bring it down to about 24. This highly uh, subdivided version here is what's going to drive the displacement map painting. Okay, So as you're painting on your displacement map what you're seeing displaced is this highly subdivided version um, underneath Okay, and your viewport mesh uh, is essentially uh, you know what you're going to see in the viewport the the amount of polygons you have so you really have two versions essentially is this just like in a regular 3d application where you have your original version of your mesh you know your original low poly and you allow just that low poly wireframe to show but when you uh, apply a subdivision modifier or something to it and crank that up what you're actually seeing in a viewport is a result of that uh, subdivision modifier underneath the original. Okay, so it's really the same principle here. Uh, since we have our UVs already laid out, I'm just going to choose keep UV, uh, no UV smoothing, and if we want to change the UVs at this point, uh, the names of our UV maps, we can do that here. And uh, I'll just go ahead and hit OK. And I'll pause while it calculates. Okay, we're done. So that uh, took anywhere between uh, 30 seconds to a minute, typically. So we go to the paint room, and I want to hide the voxel object, have the vox tree layer panel visible. Uh, if you don't, you can always just go to the view menu and uncheck show voxels in the paint room. I like to always have the vox tree layer panel visible here, and you can bring that up uh, from the Windows menu, vox tree, and just dock it somewhere in the viewport. So here on the root layer, I'm just going to click the visibility icon to hide that part. And I can hit my W key to turn wireframe on. And you can see it basically has one level of subdivision. And I have a little issue here I need to clean up. So this is where you could decide, is it easy enough to clean up here in the paint room? Or do I need to go back and rebake this? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebake this. I'll close the texture editor. So we'll go to the object section here. Okay, and then I'm going to clear all the layers. 
I'm going to go back to the Vox Trilayer panel and unhide the voxel object. And so, yeah, let's go back and make another attempt here. This time I may want to adjust my settings a bit. Okay, so I can readjust this one. Let's make that one or oops. Point one, point one, and we'll change it to uh, one point five. We'll see how that works. And also, this resolution is pretty important if we know that we want to sculpt in the tweak room. That means uh, this again, this viewport mesh is what I'll be sculpting on. So if I want to make any edits that will be visible in a vector displacement map, then I probably want to make sure that I give myself enough subdivision here in the viewport mesh to work with. Okay, so I'll go back. Okay, so we're done, and we can go to the paint room now. Hide our voxel object, and we still have some of these issues remaining. So again, I'll just go ahead and clean that up. I'll go to the body layer here, and the first thing I want to do is work with the depth channel to smooth those out just a bit. I have my paintbrush selected. And for this, I turned off the color and the specularity channel just to work with depth. And I'm also going to bring up my texture UV editor from the textures menu here. Once you dock it somewhere, it will remain in place. Uh, even after you leave 3D code and come back. Okay. So, right click and drag left and right to zoom in. Middle mouse click and drag to pan. I'm going to hold the shift key and just smooth this little area out here. I could also do the same thing here in the 2D Texture Editor. At this point, I'm going to speed up the playback for just a short clip here. So bear with me, if you will. And just as you would in Photoshop, you would use the clone stamp tool maybe to select an area and basically copy or clone the color or the pixel information. In Photoshop, you would hold down the Alt key to select an area. In 3D Coat, it's the Control key. So first I want to uncheck or disable depth and enable color. And so now I'll do that. I'll hold the Control key release the control key and go ahead and start painting. Same thing here. Easy enough. So I'll go back to the paintbrush, enable depth and disable color. I'll switch to a different brush alpha here. It's a little more soft. And right click and drag down uh, to decrease the depth value. Hold the control key to indent. And I'm not concerned with uh, how drastic it is as I'm brushing because I can always dial that back. And I'll show that here in just a moment. So you can be just a little bit excessive with it if you need. Okay, so I could just smooth here, but you have another option that allows you to make local adjustments. So we would do that with the magnification or reduction brush. In this case, we want to reduce. 
can do. And you have the degree of change by default, it's 50%. Oops. So I'm just trying to be real delicate with it here. And then I can hold the shift key and do a little bit of smoothing. Okay, so that looks fine enough for demonstration purposes. Okay, so as you are painting on the map here, 3 d Cut will displace using that uh, ultra subdivided version. But again, uh, if I hit the W key, you can turn uh, wireframe on, and you can see I have essentially two levels of subdivision on this viewport mesh. If I want to increase the uh, ultra subdivided version, uh, adjust sub patching. I'll do that from a view menu, adjust sub patching and you can adjust it according to the um, UV map that you have. Okay, so I'll just cancel that. Let's go to the tweak room. And this is where you might want to make large scale changes. The select move option here basically opens up transform tools where you can uh, select with a pen or any one of these selection types here. This will allow you to quickly select multiple objects if you want, or when you click Select Objects, you would select them individually, uh, holding the Shift key. Okay, and you can move, rotate, and scale. You can even select with the gradient, which is essentially soft selection, and you can widen, expand, contract, smooth, and so on the uh, gradient selection and whatnot. And you can clear the entire selection here. Um, but then you have some just standard sculpting tools. So let's use a draw brush here. And so when you export vector displacement maps, or should you export a vector displacement map, when you sculpt something here uh, in the tweak room, this is what's going to be most notable okay, in the vector displacement map. So let's go to the paint room here. I want to create a new layer. And if you wanted to create more, especially for an application like Lightwave where you can uh, export a model with endomorphs, which essentially will store multiple morphs or multiple phonemes or visemes, things of that sort, on a single model, uh, you can do that here. You can store them on layers. So you can sculpt to make your edits here in this room. And this is just meant to help facilitate um, the sculpting capability with uh, image maps in the paint room. So this is really just a kind of a companion workspace. Okay, so let's go back to the paint room. As you can see, when I hide that layer, just the work that I did in the tweak room is all stored. All that mesh information, all those changes are stored on this layer. And so I can name this maybe angry on a character and then uh, hide that and go back to the original state of the mesh and then sculpt another one for maybe sad or happy or whatnot and store them on layers like this. And then when you finally export the model you'll have the ability to add a morph here if you like. Okay. So you'll notice that you do not have any options for vector displacement here. Uh, you do for 32 bits, 8 bits, 16 bits with an EXR file or TIFF, 
but uh, nothing for vector displacement. So if you wanted to export a vector displacement map, you would do so from the textures menu, export vector displacement map. Okay, And when you do that, it will give you the ability to uh, export per UV map. So click cancel. Okay, so in the next video we're going to resume with PTEX. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.